Here we have properties and numbers. These are your rules to math. These are why you can manipulate the numbers any way you want um, in order to solve a problem. These are the kind of like the shortcuts to finding a treasure map. Uh, additive, or I shouldn't say additive. Uh, let's take a look at the commutative property. I spelled commutative wrong. That's an A. Um, the commutative property, I can use it in addition and multiplication would be the ad, ad, um, addition commutative property or the multiplication additive property. It all depends on what operation you're using in a problem. Um, I can say, let's use the example 5 plus 9 for additive. Uh, the commutative property of that would be 9 plus 5. All I'm doing is switching the numbers around. Uh, the same thing for if I were to do multiplication. Uh, if I had 5 times 9, if I were to use the commutative property, I could say 9 times 5. The reason they both work is because 5 plus 9 is 14, and 9 plus 5 is also 14. Uh, I can say 5 times 9 is 45, and 9 times 5 is 45. Either way, you're going to have the same answer. Uh, just because you switch them around, you still have the same value. You can't do it in subtraction. If you said 5 minus 9, you're going to get a different answer than 9 minus, four, 9 minus 5. So it only works with your operations of addition and multiplication. Remember, you only have four operations. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay? Uh, the same thing with the associate property in addition and multiplication. Notice these kind of go together. Uh, for the associative property, I can say is you usually have three terms. You would, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, for addition, it would be 7 plus 6 plus 9 equals 7 plus 6 plus 9. Uh, with the associative property, I'm going to put parentheses around. So I solve the 7 plus 6 first. Let me go ahead and highlight that for you so it stands out. I'm going to associate with the 7 plus 6. I did not change the order of the numbers. Uh, instead, I'm going to put parentheses and solve 6 plus 9 first. And you can do this because you'll always end up with the same answer. Uh, 7 plus 6 is 13 plus 9 is 22. And here, if I said 7 plus 6 plus 9 is 15, I'm still going to get an answer of 22. And it's going to work every single time. It also works with multiplication. If I had 1 times 2 times 3 is going to be the same answer as 1 times 2 times 3. Uh, what you're really looking for is the value the numbers give you after you solve them. What is the value of the number? And I can associate or solve the 1 times 2 over here. And on this side of the equation, I'm going to associate the 2 times 3. So I'm not changing the order of the numbers. I'm just solving them differently. I can say 1 times 2 is 2 times 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. Or I can solve the 2 times 3 first. It gives you 6. And 1 times 6, it gives you the same value. And that's why these properties work. Okay, so notice the difference between the commutative property and the associative property. In the commutative property, I switched my numbers. And the associ excuse me, in the associative property, the numbers stayed the same. 769, 769, I just associated uh, by solving the different numbers. Additive identity is pretty much what it says. Additive, meaning we're going to add the identity. Say, for example, I have 3. What do I add to 3 to get my identity back or the same number back? 
the only number in this whole entire world I can add to 3 or any other number to get it back is 0. Okay, and that only works with addition. That's why it's called the additive identity property. Now the additive inverse, also known as the opposite, is what's going to give me 0. If I have a positive 3, what do I add to it to get 0? And that would be a negative 3. So your additive inverse is when you're adding negatives or positives, you're adding the opposite. Multiplicative inverse is the same thing. I'm multiplying two numbers. Instead of getting zero this time, I'm going to get one. So if I were to say four times what gives me one, it would be the inverse. Multiplying the inverse. Uh, the inverse of 4 is 1 fourth. All I did, it's a reciprocal. All I did was flip it over, and I'll always get 1. The reason I get 1 is because 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Anything over itself will equal 1. And that property comes in real handy. When and so does the additive inverse property when solving equations. That's exactly what we're doing. The distributed property you're going to use forever. You're going to use forever and ever and ever. And what the distributed property says, I'm sure you're already familiar with it being in Algebra 2. Uh, if you're not, what it is is A times B plus C. Okay, and what this tells you is you're going to multiply your a times b, which gives you a b, and then you're going to distribute the a to the c. Now notice I have a plus sign, so I'm going to add, if it was a minus sign, I'd put a negative, and multiply a times c to give you a c. You can also write the a on the other side. It's called the left distributive property. If I had b plus c, with an A over here, you're still doing the exact same thing. You're still distributing the A to the B, which this time it's BA plus, and then A times C, which is CA. You're still going to get the same answer, but notice based on our mul multiplication of commutative property, that it's okay if we switch the answers. We're still our, the numbers. We're still going to get the same answer. Okay. Let's look at some examples and how we would use this.